Welcome to the channel. It was pointed out to me some time ago that the British Army Barrack shirt is actually quite different from the British Army Soldier 95 shirt. And this astonished me because on the face of it the two shirts look really similar. I've got a Barrack shirt here in MTP and I'll just show you. It's got an open collar, it's got two chest pockets, both set at an angle and both closing with lid that closes with one single button. They've both got six pockets down the front and a central rank tab. A late issue Soldier 95 shirt marked for training only. And as you can see it also has an open collar, six pockets down the front, chest pockets set in an angle, each with one single button closing the lid and a central rank tab. So I was a little astonished uh, to hear that the Barrett shirt would not be acceptable, especially since it was a later issue item, and so if he was intending to wear this as part of his uniform, that probably wouldn't pose a problem. And he said, no, it's not really in the way it looks, although it is different there as well. It's in the fit. The Soldier 95 shirt was a perfect fit. The shoulders were good, torso was good, it was good on the sleeves, it was just the shirt that he wanted. And the barrack shirt, unfortunately, was too tight over the shoulders and it was, and this was the main complaint, it was very flappy on the torso and it just didn't look right, it didn't fit right, it didn't feel right. Sadly, the Soldier 95 MTP shirts were only issued right at the very beginning of the release of MTP, so they were a fairly limited run and the only thing available now is barrack shirts, so Unfortunately, we weren't able to help him, but it did get me thinking. I have the opportunity here that I've got shirts from three different eras, uh, one pre-95, obviously Soldier 95, late era, and also a barrack shirt, and it would be worthwhile seeing what the differences really were. Soldier 95 was highly popular and it ran from 1995, so it had a good long run and it was the staple British military uniform. It did pose the problems that with the raised buttons it was difficult to wear with body armour. There would be pressure points and it would be very uncomfortable, especially in the heat. So that was one of the reasons for swapping away from that style to the current PCS shirt. The Soldier 95 shirt is actually derived from the earlier tropical combat lightweight jacket. The desert version of the combat jacket looks a bit like this, and so you can see the hallmark, six buttons down the front, a collar which actually also had a button and eyelet so that it could be tightened around the neck, a central zipper with buttons so it could be zipped like a jacket but if it was too hot then the zip could be left undone and the shirt closed with the buttons on their own. As a lightweight jacket they also had sleeve pockets and they also had epaulets, one on each shoulder. One of the things that made the Soldier 95 shirt so popular at the time, when it replaced the older tropical shirt, was the button style being changed to these slotted buttons because that would eliminate buttons falling off. Another popular change was the introduction of the central rank tab. So from that point onwards it was no longer necessary to have two rank slides and to have things flapping about on the shoulder. Features that the Soldier 95 shirt retained from the earlier tropical jacket were the central zip and initially also the collar button and collar eyelet so the shirt could be done up tight around the neck. It was a bit of a hybrid from shirt with lightweight material and also jacket and in fact Soldier 95 shirts are referred to in the tag as jacket combat lightweight. When the desert versions of the Soldier 95 shirt came out they did remove the central zipper because it was found to be far too hot and it just never got used. Moving on to the barrack shirt, the central zip has also not been retained. But there are a few other smaller changes that come apparent on closer inspection. The collar definitely does not have a button anymore, nor does it have an eyelet. Additionally, the buttons are no longer set so that the top of the collar can be closed. There is no option other than to wear it open unlike the Soldier 95 shirt, which could be zipped up right to the top and closed 
just under the neck. I think the difference that counts the most between the two shirts is going to be the way they fit. Here it's really useful to be able to compare the two directly side by side. Both these shirts are labelled 18096, so in theory they should be fitting the same body type, body size. And this is where I was actually the most surprised, because he was onto something when he said they just didn't fit right. The shoulders on the barrack shirt are narrower on each side by one centimeter. These would feel like they were pulling against your upper arms. The other one is that comparing the torso, so from armpit to armpit and laying them on top of each other, the barrack shirt turns out to be a good inch at least, perhaps slightly more, when laid flat against the Soldier 95 shirt. So this was really the main source of his dissatisfaction with the Soldier 95 shirt. He said it was far too flappy about the torso. So although the two shirts look on their surface to be very similar, he is completely right. Someone who was used to wearing Soldier 95 shirts, with lightweight jackets, would probably find the barrack shirt to be incredibly uncomfortable. Too tight on the shoulders and too flappy on the chest. We speculated together that perhaps whoever it was who was producing the shirts, the contractor, had lost the earlier Soldier 95 pattern and were scrambling to make a shirt that looked similar but had forgotten some fairly major details. I hope that if you've also experienced problems between wearing Soldier 95 shirts and the newer Barrack shirt, this helps to explain a little bit about where the problems come from. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.